Wait, red paladins use shields in Wrath of the Lich King? If this is news to you, then stick around because we will be covering everything you need to know for setting up your paladin in PvP, including choosing your race, talents, glyphs, gear, and professions, as well as giving you a list of macros you should be using. After this is done, you can actually understand how and why you might actually be playing with a shield as a ret paladin in Wrath of the Lich King PvP. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. For the Alliance, you'll want to play Human. Their racial will to survive indirectly grants you tons of increased damage. That's because it acts like a PvP medallion and allows you to wear two PvE trinkets at once. This may sound like it's OP, and you're right, it is. And it gets even better in later patches where PvE trinkets become absolutely busted. The main downfall of Human is that unlike other races, you don't gain access to any utility. It's pretty much just damage and nothing else. And in Season 5, damage is already so high due to players having incredibly low resilience. And now, for the Horde, you'll want to play Blood Elf. This shouldn't come as a surprise, seeing as you don't really have any other option, but even so, Blood Elves have an incredible racial, Arcane Torrent. This ability silences all nearby opponents for 2 seconds while not being on the global cooldown. It also generates some mana, which can be clutch in some situations where you're completely tapped. The silence, however, is its biggest strength. That's because Paladins and Wrath don't have any interrupt, therefore you can use Arcane Torrent as a pseudo kick. Although it has a 2 minute cooldown which is pretty bad for interrupt standards, it can still catch your opponent off guard. Silence effects in Wrath cannot be removed with a PvP trinket, so it can sometimes even be used as a way to guarantee a kill. Most of the time however, it's not going to be flashy, you're just going to hammer of justice someone into a 2 second silence with an arcane torrent, and that's ok too. Your avenging Wrath share a 2 minute CD with the racial, so you could save it for your burst windows, making your big pop even bigger. Next up we have Talents. Ret Paladins have two primary builds so let's just dive in. As a Ret Paladin, you can choose between playing with a two-handed weapon or even with a one-hander and a shield. This might come as a surprise to you, but a one-handed Ret is actually a thing and generally does better into melee DPS, while a two-handed build will perform better into casters. Of course, you never know exactly what teams you'll be fighting, but since Season 5 is very melee oriented, you might find it more effective to play the one-handed build. In any case, let's break it down. Starting things off, we have the two-handed spec, which is the better option when fighting casters, since wearing a shield won't do anything versus magic damage, as well as the fact that Divine Storm and Crusader Strike do the most DPS when fighting cloth wearers. It's important to note that since these abilities scale off weapon damage, you'll want a weapon that's as slow as possible, which is the reason why you don't want these talents when playing a one hand build. Sheath of Light increases healing and seal damage by converting attack power to spell power and causes our critical heals to also apply a hot onto the target. This synergizes greatly with Art of War, since it allows us to cast instant flash of lights. It's important to know that you want to try to use your Art of War proc on a sacred shield since it causes the crit chance of your flash of light to increase by 50%, allowing you to apply the hot from Sheath of Light very consistently. You may have noticed that Seal of Command isn't selected, but that's because it's not worth the single talent point. In Wrath of the Lich King, this ability was changed to be a seal that increases your AoE damage. The Judgment damage is way lower than Seal of Righteousness as well. Thus, there's really no point running this in PvP since you typically want more single target damage. Your Judgment damage is actually incredibly important because talents like Fanaticism cause it to have the highest crit chance out of all your offensive abilities. There is one exception to this, Sanctified Wrath. With this talent, your Hammer of Wrath is nearly guaranteed to crit. Additionally, during your Avenging Wrath, 50% of your damage will bypass through damage reduction effects. This means that it can sometimes be worth it to actually use Avenging Wrath into major cooldowns like Pain Suppression in order to counter it. Critting has immense value due to the talent Righteous Vengeance, which cause your crits to apply a dot for 8 seconds. 
What's important to note about this talent is that it stacks, so if you continuously crit, then the dot will become bigger and bigger. Repentance is one of your primary CC abilities, being an instant ranged crowd control that shares DRs with things like Polymorph and Freezing Trap. It has a pretty hefty cooldown, thus you want to be really careful with how you use it. Luckily, it removes Righteous Vengeance, which makes this ability incredibly flexible. Moving on from crits, Judgment of the Wise is super important because it makes it incredibly hard for you to go oom. Um. You need to be aware of the fact this only procs if your judgment deals damage, which means using a judgment into a shield will result in no proc. Try to break shields before using judgment if you're in need of mana. Arguably one of your best talents is Divine Purpose. It causes your Hand of Freedom to remove stuns, which is completely insane. It's important to note that it can't be used while silenced, so make sure you Hand of Freedom before you get covered with a silence. This talent also causes spells and ranged attacks to have a chance to miss, which is absolutely insane. But let's say you get silenced and not stunned. What do you do then? Well, that's when Divine Sacrifice comes in. This ability, contrary to popular belief, can be used while silenced. When combined with Divine Guardian, your Divine Sacrifice gives you a lot of damage reduction on a fairly short cooldown. And now with the two-handed spec out of the way, let's cover the melee counter, the one-handed build. The first thing that you need to know about this build is the difference between the specialization talents. The one-handed version increases all your damage, whereas the two-handed version only increases physical damage. This is an incredibly important difference. What makes this build work is the high amount of procs you get from Art of War. You get more procs since you attack much more often due to Reckoning while wearing a lower attack speed weapon. And since Art of War procs off melee attack crits, this ultimately leads to more healing. We take two points out of Guardian's favor and put them into Divinity instead because as a pseudo tank spec, you play more of a defensive role, which means you rarely want to use Hand of Freedom to remove slows. You want to use it to remove stuns instead. This means the increased duration of Hand of Freedom isn't really worth the talent points. Additionally, the Blessing of Protection cooldown reduction doesn't really matter because in Season 5, the games are so short that you'll rarely get to a second bop even with this talent. Moving on, we want to take two points out of Pursuit of Justice and put them into Improved Blessing of Might instead. This is because since you're wearing a shield, you'll have the Disarm Reduction Enchant on your shield, making this talent not worth the points. The movement speed is nice, however, the increased attack power from Blessing of Might is much more valuable. And finally, we have Vindication. This talent is amazing for one hand spec because it further reinforces the point of the build, which is to counter melee classes. Additionally, since it only procs off physical attacks, you'll be getting more procs than the two handed spec since your auto attacks are faster, as well as having the talent reckoning increase your overall auto attacks throughout the game. And now it's time for glyphs. Of course, there are a lot to choose from, and it can seem a bit confusing, so let's break it down. Starting off with the major glyphs for both builds, we recommend you get your hands on Glyph of Judgment as well as Glyph of Turn Evil. Judgment is one of your main damage abilities for both builds due to numerous amplifiers, and thus increasing its damage by 10% is a big deal. Turn Evil having no cast time means that you can CC a DK's gargoyle or even their pet, and versus Warlocks, you can instantly cover their pet on a setup, making your goes much more deadly. For your final major glyph slot, you'll want to run the Seal of Righteousness for the two-hand build. This seal is your primary one that you'll be using 99% of the time. With the two-handed build, you'll proc the seal with all your active abilities, which means having an increased 10% damage on it is massive. For the one-hand build, however, you'll primarily be using Seal of Vengeance since you can stack it up really quickly due to your fast attack speed, as well as Reckoning. It also acts as a dispel protection for your Hammer of Justice, as well as Vindication. Therefore, you'll want to run the Glyph of Exorcism in your final glyph slot, since this ability is a big part of your burst damage with the one hand build. Glyph of Blessing of Kings, although not used in Season 5, is still one of the better ones since it makes the mana cost less. So, in case you're fighting a comp where you need the extra health to live, it's nice being able to reapply it at a cheap cost. Glyph of the Wise can be clutch in some games, on the off chance that you're playing a game where you're completely tapped on mana and need to use Seal of Wisdom for mana regeneration. And finally, we have Glyph of Sense Undead. This glyph is probably your most useless one, so if you're struggling for cash, feel free to skip this one. Having 1% increased damage versus undeads is only really relevant into DKs whenever they have Lichborn active. Now it's time to go over your gear, starting with your pre bis followed by your final best in slot. But remember that having a lightsaber doesn't make you a Jedi, just like having the right gear won't instantly make you a gladiator. So check out our courses on Skillcapped after this to start learning from the best and make your gear actually matter. 
Anyway, before going into gear sets, let's cover the stat priority for Rhett Paladins. You'll want to focus on getting as much strength as possible. This stat increases your block chance, weapon damage, and spell power. You may have noticed that there's no spell penetration in the stat priority. That's because Paladins deal damage in the Holy School, which can't be resisted. Thus, spell penetration doesn't do anything. After strength, it's time to get the hit cap, which as a melee class is 5%. Without the hit cap, you'll see key abilities missing against players, which is obviously something you should want to avoid. Avoid. Next up, you'll need to stack as much resilience as possible. In Season 5, this stack can be a bit hard to come by. For your final secondary, you'll want to stack as much crit as possible. It synergizes greatly with Righteous Vengeance, which continuously stack up the more you crit, which means with a high crit chance, you can absolutely decimate players' health bars. Knowing all of this, it should be no surprise that you'll want to put Strength Gems in Reds, Strength Resil or Hit Split Gems in Yellows, depending on whether you're hit capped or not, and finally, Strength Stamina split gems in blues. For your meta gem, you'll want to get the one that increases your crit damage as well as your crit chance. You'll want to put one all stat gem in a blue socket. That's because the options you have for blue gems are rather poor. Strength stamina splits are nice, but it's nothing in comparison to an all stat gem. Now for the gear lists. We're going to start off with the one-handed Prebis set, which is obtainable within the first two weeks of the expansion. The gear set consists of items that are BOEs, which you can buy from the auction house, dungeon gear from normal and heroics, and honor gear that is easily grindable. Both rings of the Kirin Tor can simply be purchased for gold depending on your reputation with the Kirin Tor faction. It is expensive, but due to inflation on launch, you should be able to farm the gold if you're dedicated enough. If you're not though, then we recommend you just get your hands on the alternatives. These are a lot easier to get, but unfortunately, not as good. For the two-handed build, you'll only need to swap out a couple of items, so if you want to play both builds, then you're in luck. Your weapon will be swapped out for one with spell power. The one-handed build focuses primarily on magic damage and healing, meaning that weapon damage isn't important at all. For the non-humans out there, you'll obviously need a medallion. We recommend you swap out the Dark Moon card greatness, since the Berserker has practically permanent uptime. For your full Biss set, you'll want almost every single item from PvP. This makes Rhett Paladins incredibly easy to gear since you won't need to rely on getting lucky from raids. The Dark Moon cards are still your best in slot, so we highly recommend you get your hands on these as soon as possible. With that being said, there are a few items that you'll need from PvE. It's pretty much the exact same thing for the one-handed build, except for the weapons and the Librum. And once again, you'll want to replace your weapon with the one that is spell power. And again, for the non-humans out there, you'll want to replace the Dark Moon card greatness for a medallion. And now for Professions, which in Wrath gives you bonuses in combat. Therefore, it's important to know which one to choose and why. Although it may hurt your pile of gold sitting in the bank, we strongly recommend you get your hands on Jewel Crafting and Engineering. Jewel Crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of Amplified Gems that you can only have three of. This is huge since normal Epic Gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the Jewel Crafting exclusives that much bigger. Engineering is the most important one of the two though. This is because of the hand-mounted Pyro Rocket Glove Enchant, which acts as an additional 2-3k damage off the GCD on a relatively short cooldown. This can be incorporated into your CC chains with Repentance and Hammer of Justice in order to generate even more pressure during your setups. It's especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that it doesn't scale off anything. The damage is static, so it's obviously going to be the strongest in the arena season where players' HP pools are the lowest. Additionally, when playing the one-handed spec, the Rocket Glove is going to be even more important. That's because your burst damage isn't as high as the two-handed build, which means you're going to rely a lot more on this during your setups. For our final section, we're going to cover macros. Paladins can be a bit macro intensive, however, it all comes down to how deep you want to delve in. Starting off light, we have the standard focus macros for your Hammer of Justice and Repentance. Focus macros for your CC abilities have become a standard in WoW PvP. Being able to deal damage to your target while seamlessly CCing someone else is incredibly important. An all-in-one cancel aura macro for your Blessing of Protection and Divine Shield can be clutch in a lot of scenarios. That's because these amazing defensive cooldowns unfortunately also reduce your damage while active. Therefore, it can be useful once you've recovered after using one of these defensives to remove it so that you can get on the offensive and start creating pressure. Taunting pets may seem trivial, however, it can be very important in some instances. Outside of just tanking some pet damage for your team, it also allows you to do things like keeping the pet away from your healer in case they want to drop combat in order to drink. If timed perfectly, then you could even have the pet hit you out of CC like Scattershot or Blind. 
Having dispel macros for your team can be a bit keybind intensive, however, it's incredibly important. You want to avoid canceling your attacks just because you have to target your teammate in order to dispel them out of CC. That's incredibly bad on any class, but even more so on a Ret Paladin, since the majority of your kit's damage, at least for the one-handed build, comes from auto-attacking. You want to do the same thing for your other support abilities, like Hand of Freedom and Hand of Sacrifice. However, these are not as important, since they're not abilities you're going to be using all the time, like Cleanse. Therefore, if you're running low on keybinds, feel free to use the mouse over alternatives instead. These macros will cast the ability onto whoever your cursor is on, and if it's not on anyone, then it'll cast on your target. These types of macros aren't as efficient, so we recommend you look for ways to expand the amount of keybinds you have if you're running low on them on a Ret Paladin, since you really shouldn't need a lot. Now you are ready to start your PvP journey. To go even further, be sure to check out Skillcap to see our exclusive damage and playstyle courses designed by some of the best Ret Paladins in the world. And of course, check out Skillcap. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.